good morning once again class so today we start learning about river danube in the last uh, previous class we learned about river nile and how its two major tributaries the white nile and the blue nile they come together where in the capital of sudan and from there they form they become one single river which is known as river nile now coming to river danube please take up your pencils river this is on page number 41 river danube is the second large longest river of europe it rises from black forest of germany you remember the black forest cakes and uh, pastry, pastries that you love to eat they originate or are uh, the ori uh, original recipe came from black forest only and flows into the black sea so can you see this is the black sea and this is the course of the river danube here is germany and here you will find black forest it drains as many as 10 countries please look at the map also you will be able to count the number of countries 10 countries that turn the page to page number 42 include romania hungary serbia austria germany bulgaria slovakia croatia ukraine and moldova underline all that now the river has immense political social and economic importance why political because it is sea passing through 10 country so it will have that impact on the political social and economic life of the citizens citizens of these particular countries now in the transportation of industrial goods and raw materials this river is playing a key role so from one part of europe to the other part it, this river plays a key role besides the generation of hydroelectricity water supply of to the industrial and residential sectors education and fishing are its other uses now coming to river rhine see where it originates and how it ends now it is one of the most important rivers of europe its length is approximately 1234 km please keep on underlining whatever you see underlined the river flows through six european countries with different local names such as rhine in germany rhine in france and rhine in netherlands it originates in swiss alps and flows into the north sea so swiss alps switzerland is also known as swiss here it originates and then it carries on on its journey through germany austria switzerland hmm, france is here then to netherlands and then finally drains into the north sea it is the geographical boundary between germany and france it is also a boundary between germany and france see here this side is germany this is france now river rhine is one of the most important arteries in the dense network of europe's commercial transport system nearly 1/5 of the world's chemical industries are established along the banks of this river so this is very sad why because the result is the presence of innumerable toxic substances in the water that polluted polluted the river to a great extent so all kind of toxic substances are dumped into the river now coming to river yangtze river yangtze is asia's longest river and the third longest in the world underline it originates from the galadindong peak in qinghai of china and flows into the east china sea after covering the length of 6300 km see so here in this particular map they have shown two rivers river yangtze and river huangho river yangtze is here and river huangho is here these are the two major rivers of china underline the yangtze basin covers about 1,800,000 km square kilometer area along with its mighty tributaries so there are a number of tributaries which bring water to these two huge rivers or longest rivers underline the biggest dam of the world called as the three gorges dam is built on this river 
Thus, hydro power generation and supply of water in the industries and residential areas through canals are the key role played by the river as far as China's economy is concerned. Besides, the fertile basin is agriculturally very productive and accounts for 70% of China's wheat production. The biodiversity is also rich and varied in this large river basin. So, whenever we are talking about a river basin children, so agriculturally it will be very fertile because of the rich alluvial soil and the silt which gets deposited over here. Now, river Wangu originates in Bayanhar mountains of King Hai. Bayanhar mountains of King Hai, somewhere here. Right? Now, it is the second longest river of Asia with a length of about 5,464 kilometers. The river is popularly called as the Yellow River due to the color of its water. The yellow lowest soil that is deposited on the banks and the bed of the river makes it of that color. Each year incurring flood damages houses and properties. Thus the river is rightly called as the sorrow of China. This you please mark it as give reason also. So why is the you the question can be simply children that river Huango is also known as the sorrow of China. So the answer will be because incurring floods damage house and properties every year. Now coming to river Ob is one of the longest rivers of Asia. It originates in Altai mountains and flows into the Arctic Ocean through the Gulf of Ob. The Ob basin covers most parts of Siberia of Russia and spreads over 1,593,000 square kilometer area. It is about 5,410 km long with a very large catchment area where other uh, tributaries come and join a major river. It remains frozen from November till April. We are talking about Siberia in Russia, the northernmost part and here you will, this is the North Pole. So therefore, it remains frozen. It is the major mode of transportation and the Trans-Siberian Railway Line has three stations on the bank of River Oaks. See how important it is. It has immense potential of hydropower generation. Maybe why? Because it is flowing, all rivers you know flow from a higher gradient to a lower gradient. The banks are well utilized under agricultural and manufacturing activities. The middle and lower Ob basin has oil and gas fields contributing Russia's two-third of total petroleum and natural gas production. Right? So this is the importance of river Ob. Now with that we come closer home to river Indus. You have all uh, learnt about Indus Valley Civilization. So it was founded or located on the banks of the river Indus. So please keep on underlining. The river Indus rises from the Kailash mountain near Mansarovar lake in Tibet at an altitude of 5180 meters. It enters the Indian territory through the state of Jammu and Kashmir and flows a distance of about 5 2 sorry 250 kilometers. So originating in Tibet in the Himalayas entering the Indian Territory in the state of Jammu and Kashmir and then flows a distance about 250 km within India and then it enters Pakistan through the Atok Hills. It flows through the entire country of Pakistan where it is joined with its five main tributaries such as Chelam, Chenab, Ravi, Bayas and Sakraj. It drains into the Arabian Sea after covering a total length of 2,880 km. The famous Indus Valley Civilization had developed in the basin of this river. Since that time, the entire area is intensively cultivated. You know Harappan and Mohenjo-daro ruins are found mainly in Pakistan here. Now, Indus 
Irrigation canals are dug out from the tributaries and the main Indus river supplies water to the agricultural fields. Indus is the only one major river system of Pakistan. Unlike India where you have the Ganga and the Yamuna and the Narmada and the Tapi also they are major rivers. Now Indus, sorry, and all river system of Pakistan and all its main cities. Manufacturing industries and agro based activities are dependent on the on this particular river thus it is called as the lifeline of pakistan so if there is a give reason such as river indus is known as the lifeline of pakistan because it is the major river system of pakistan and all manufacturing and agro based in activities are dependent on this river now before i end this video let us quickly look at these five major rivers which are the main tributaries of the river indus Jhelum, it originates in Pak occupied Kashmir and then it comes down to Kashmir, touches the Wolar Lake and then it flows into the Arabian Sea. Now these are the rivers which flow in river Indus flows into the Arabian Sea, unlike river Ganga and Yamuna, which flow into the Bay of Bengal. Then Rabi, children, it flows through southwest of Punjab. Bias, it originates in Rotang Pass around uh, 14,000 feet. The altitude is around 14,000 feet. When we talk about Satlich, it originates in China, coming, enters through Shipkila Pass, and then it goes to Harike Patan in Punjab. Now, when we are talking about River Bias, after coming to India through Rotang Pass, it comes down to Mandi. If you have been to Kulu Manali, then the river which is flowing along the highway or the major route is River Vyas and it goes flows on till Mandi and from there it goes to, it enters Punjab in India, right? Mandi is in Himachal Pradesh and then it flows into Punjab. So these this was one of the major river systems of Pakistan. It is closer to home. Not all it does not flow through India. Okay. Its tributaries do flow through India, only a little part of River Indus. Let us see over here. It flows through River Indus is here. The, these are the ma major tributaries. See, can you see over here, children? River Indus. We have river Indus here, Jhelum, Chenab, Ravi, Bias and Satluj. So Bias is coming from here somewhere. So this is the network of five rivers which flow into river Indus and which further drains into the Arabian Sea. So as of now, I want you to revise right from river Danube. Give it a thorough study, whatever you have, river Rhine, river Yangtze, whatever you have not understood, Please note it down, underline it somewhere and we will discuss it again when the school reopens. God bless you.